Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Unfog with Dr. Adhar Parveen. This is a maths class of chapter statistics and this is a part 3 lecture of statistics. Actually I have made 4 classes, this is the 4th class but the first 2 classes were regarding the proper chapter. Third class was just the revision of a first and second class. Now this is again the proper uh, statistics chapter class. Okay, so this will be the last class for this chapter statistics, and it is based on Karnataka TET and HSTR syllabus. Okay, now before starting the class, I want to give uh, one announcement. Actually, uh, I told about this earlier also in this YouTube channel only that I am starting a paid HSTR PM course for three months. If you all are interested, you can just write your name, email ID, phone number, course name and uh, you can send me all these details along with the screenshot of payment. You can mail me at athartethstrcourses at the rate gmail.com. The fees is 2500 for full 3 months course and also you will be able to watch all the classes till your exam because no notification came till now, right? We don't know. Some are saying that notification will come uh, just before the election. But election is going to be in 2023, right? But we cannot start our preparation after the notification, right? We will be very late. We will have very less time. After the notification, only two months or max three months could be there. Three months is also doubt. Two to two and a half months could be there after the notification. But that will not be enough for our preparation, right? Already this uh, recruitment is coming after so many years. I think last recruitment was in 2015. So now this is 2022. That too it is completing now. So we cannot take risk. So what I have done is I will give you all the classes daily. This is a actually 90 classes course. Okay. So all 90 classes I will be giving you one by one. Uh, you can watch them till your exam. Whenever the notification come. Whenever the exam be. You can watch all the classes. I will give you access to watch all my classes till your exam date. Okay. So, don't worry. After exam only, I will remove your access. Okay. Now, uh, actually, so many people, they were asking me to extend the registration date. Actually, why I kept uh, 2nd November as registration date means uh, I am taking Karnataka TET crash course. In this course, no, actually I got jumbled when the students came at the last moment. Even after the classes started also they came. So it was a very deviating for me. My mind gets deviated. I cannot make good classes at that time. So I got jumbled. I thought that it is a learning for me and this time I will not do that. But I realized that my problem which I thought is big, it is not as big as the problem of the aspirants. Because many of you, you are uh, teachers in private schools. Many of you, maybe you are students also. And many of you are writing Karnataka TET exam, which is to be held on 6th November. So, I, I am told by many aspirants that they have financial issues also. Many of the teachers, they are getting salary on 5th of every month. So, many of them did not get salary. That is one concern which uh, uh, led me to extend the date for registration. Second is that uh, aspirants, they are preparing for Karnataka TET, you know. So, they don't want to get deviated. I also don't want to disturb them regarding this course. Because first, uh, if they write exam well, then only they will get motivated and they will start preparation for HSTR, right? So, I don't want to become the reason uh, for their disturbance. So, after the exam, they can even decide. Actually, many of them are enrolled for a crash course also, no? Karnataka TET crash course. Even they, if they are satisfied after the crash course, they can also decide if they want to join uh, HSTR course. So, what I have done now is, I have extended the last date till 7th November. Okay? 7th November, 5 p.m. Okay? So, you can register yourself for this PM course, HSTR PM course, Physics and Mathematics course till 7th November 5 p.m. Okay. So, after that, please again don't tell me to extend the uh, date because uh, it will be too late for me. Okay. So, I am helping you all know. You all also should help me out by enrolling soon if you are interested. 
okay it's not mandatory that you must enroll into the course some free classes are also there in the youtube already i think uh, many are there i don't know how many but there are many i'll give you the uh, playlist link in the description below this video you can go and check out them even karnataka tet also many uh, videos are there free classes all are so you can watch them also no problem see only if you are interested then only you please enroll into this course one thing i would request you all is if you all trust me and if you all trust my teaching then only you please enroll into the course or else it will become tough for you also and it will become tough for me also to take classes smoothly okay so much i can request you rest i can assure you that if you enroll into my classes i will make sure that i will follow the schedule which is given in the tentative schedule which i only made okay i made it for you all so that if we have at least one tentative plan in our mind then we can strictly and with discipline we can start uh, uh, preparing right i will also make classes and you will also start watching the classes and preparing for the exam okay so much i can say okay next uh, regarding uh, the extension of the date uh, that i told you right that i have extended the last date till 7th november 2022 5 pm okay now many are asking ma'am how to pay the fee see i have given the link of one tentative schedule in the description you click that link if you click that link you will get one pdf file in that pdf file you will have tentative schedule also you will have one qr code also this is the qr code which i have displayed here same qr code you will have there also okay first see the tentative schedule properly if you are satisfied with the tentative schedule then only you decide if you want to enroll into my courses or no okay one more thing i want to tell is because notification did not come after notification comes maybe syllabus will be changed you know so if notification come late if there is some delay in notification if that happens and after notification if there is change in syllabus then don't worry i will cover that syllabus even after 3 months also if the notification comes which is not possible actually i think it should come in uh, one or two months i feel so anyway but we should uh, plan for the worst case right so worst case is that notification could come after 3 months that is the worst scenario right so if that happens also i will make classes for the rest of the syllabus if any new syllabus is included in the new notification so you all don't worry about all that once you are enrolled means it is my responsibility okay whatever you are uh, uh, expecting from a good teacher that you can expect fr from me at least i will try my best so much i can assure you okay so i told everything now uh, rest regarding the fee payment also i told you it link in the description is there you click that link you will see that uh, one pdf file will open Uh, in that pdf file you will have tentative schedule and you will also have the qr code okay so what you have to do you have to scan the qr code and you have to write your name email id phone number course name and you take the screenshot of that payment which you made and you mail all this to me at atahar tet hstr courses at gmail dot com okay so this is done and regarding last date also i told you till don't worry after writing the exam of karnataka tet you come in the evening okay then you explore my channel if you are already a crash course aspirant who has enrolled into my crash course then sit and think whether you are happy with my crash course okay if you are not a aspirant who have enrolled into my uh, crash course then explore my channel okay watch my classes which i have made for hstr if you feel that you should get enrolled into my classes then you decide it that day okay 6th november if you decide 7th november you can enroll okay so much i can do for you friends okay uh, so with this i also want to uh, say all the best to karnataka tet aspirants also all of the aspirants not only those aspirants who have attended my classes the free classes or paid classes whatever classes whoever is watching this video right now if you are a karnataka tet aspirant i wish you all all the best may the almighty help you in succeeding and cracking this exam okay 
so let us come to the subject now actually uh, i made uh, two classes for uh, statistics right this was based on uh, tet and uh, hstr syllabus in first two classes of statistics i have discussed uh, about class interval types graphical representation and uh, measurement of central tendency mean median mode in this class i will finish this chapter by discussing dispersion measures and coefficient of variation okay so actually i have done one revision class also based on these three okay a b and c so i will give the link of all the three classes in the description you can go and check out those classes also but please watch this class only if you have watched those three classes or else you will not understand anything okay so it is waste of time if you watch this class without watching those classes because all the basics are there there only okay so this is the climax of the picture actually okay now basically statistics means uh, people recognize statistics by measure of central tendency now there are three stories to measure central tendency what are they mean median and mode we have already discussed about them mean is nothing but the average median means the middle term mode means the most common term correct not term i can say number because we are talking about numbers okay mean median mode so in your exam in karnataka tet exam they have asked this question the formula to calculate the mode for given data this is a 2021 question paper okay this question i have taken from 2021 karnataka tet question paper so there is a direct formula the formula to calculate the mode for given data now if there is a, a model class in that model class you can find the mode for grouped frequency table using this formula l plus f1 minus f0 upon 2 f1 minus f0 minus f2 into h now what all these mean l means lower limit of the model class h means size of the class interval which is found by assuming all the class sizes to be equal f1 will be frequency of model class then f0 will be frequency of the class preceding the model class then f2 will be frequency of the class succeeding the model class okay so this is the formula so this is important for us so what will be the correct answer here l plus f1 minus f0 by 2 f1 minus f0 minus f2 so option 2 will be the correct answer see how you can remember this you have to remember it in order or else see you have to remember with the symbols also or else it will go wrong one thing to remember first tick first trick is only negative values are there no positive values correct one positive is there here one positive is there here but inside only negative symbols are there that is the first trick to remember okay next second trick f1 minus f0 you should go back again in denominator f1 minus f0 will be same again you put f0 in between f1 and f2 okay you have to put f0 in between f1 and f2 but f1 will have to this two you have to somehow remember but the trick is that you start with the front f1 go back f0 below f1 minus f0 you write as it is but you have to write f2 here means in denominator you should write f0 in between f1 and f2 okay so so much only i can do you should see the tricks and you should learn okay but this formula is important both for hstr and tet people okay of course in tet they have already asked in 2021 this is 2021 only but they will not ask now same question exactly but they may ask another question like this sir. they may ask you to find the formula or they may ask you to give the formula for median of grouped data so i have kept this also here median of grouped data l plus n by 2 minus cf by f into h this is completely different from the mode formula right so it must not be any confusion here you can easily remember this formula if you okay l is lower limit n is number of observations cf is cumulative frequency f is frequency h is class size okay 
so this is one i am expecting something like this this time maybe okay now i told you that uh, uh, central tendency measurement it had uh, three stories right mean median mode now this is one story now another story is how much data is dispersed from central tendency they were the measurements of central tendency now these are measurements of dispersion how much data is dispersed okay in statistics dispersion means uh, it helps to inter interpret data variability means uh, it will indicate uh, how much near or how much far that variable is how much near or how much far that variable is okay this is your measures of dispersion there are two types of measures of dispersion one is absolute next one is relative absolute measures of dispersion relative measures of dispersion these are absolute okay relative they are related to this okay they are related to this now like central tendency had three stories 3 m were there right mean median mode like that only measures of dispersion has four stories range variance standard deviation mean and mean deviation okay range variance standard deviation mean and mean deviation now i will discuss everything one by one but i will not go in order the order which i am going to follow i will write it here first i will talk about range then i will talk about mean and mean deviation then after that i will discuss variance then i will go for standard deviation okay this will be my order because i didn't like the order in the table that's why i liked this order it will be easy for me to explain also it will be easy for you to learn also okay now uh, consequently i will talk about this also actually in your syllabus they have not given this this is not there even this is not there they are given only this coefficient of variation but we will not take risk we will know at least what they are okay because uh, coefficient of range uh, i think they asked in karnataka tt so we will not take risk okay so let us start with range range what is range it is the simplest measure of variability actually how we find means we find it by doing the difference between highest and lowest observations okay that is only range for example if you have a question like this find the range of the data 21 6 17 18 12 8 4 13 what you will do first you find the highest value which is the highest value in this 21 next you will find the lowest value among this list next lowest value 4 now if you want to find the range just do highest value or large value minus small value or lowest value that will be your range here 21 minus 4 okay 21 minus 4 will give 17 so 17 is the range so simple right so that's why it's written as a simplest measure of variability now coefficient of range coefficient of range means uh, it will be equal to l minus s by l plus s what was range range was l minus s that's all right this was range this was range so coefficient of range will be range by l plus s now what is l larger value or bigger value yes smaller value or lower value okay so this is coefficient of range actually they have asked this question in karnataka tet so we will not take risk we will learn all the relative measures also the question is for the given scores 28 36 58 92 26 10 42 8 12 the coefficient of range is simply use this formula it will be l minus s by l plus s in this l minus s this is range if they ask you to find only range you must do only this much only 84 will be your range if they ask a coefficient of range 
then you have to do L plus S also and you divide L minus S by L plus S. Okay. Here you are getting 0.84 because here uh, uh, largest value in this list is 92, smallest value in this list is 8. So we use that and we find the answer. Okay. Now let's talk about the mean deviation. This is very important actually. This is important. Now what is this mean deviation? It is a statistical measure that is used to calculate average deviation. Obviously mean means average, right? Mean means average. See, if you have not attended the previous classes now, please pause the video right now because you will not understand anything. Okay, go back, you watch the classes in order. Okay, it is better if you watch the revision class also, but still if you are not willing to watch, you can skip the revision class. But at least you watch first and second class, then only you come here. Okay, so mean deviation is nothing but the average deviation from v mean value of the given data set. Average deviation from the mean value of the given data set okay now for the grouped data and for ungrouped data i am giving different formulae now what is grouped data frequency will be given in question what is ungrouped grouped data no frequency okay in grouped data frequency is given in the question means the observations will be repeated maybe some two two is there two is there two three times maybe so in that instance you will have frequency okay that is grouped data so, in that formula, you will have Fi every time. See, uh, for uh, mean deviation, you, uh, this is the formula to measure mean deviation about mean. Okay, to measure mean deviation about mean. You have summation mod. Mod means, you know it, right? Mod means ignoring the symbols. If you have, uh, ignoring the signs. If you have minus sign, that minus sign will be ignored. That's why you write this mod symbol. Okay. Actually, I have it here. See, I will tell you first. Summation. It will represent addition of values. Means x1 plus x2 plus x3 like that. Then capital X. It will represent each value of the data set. Each value. That x only is here. Summation means this together. Summing up. Summation means sum. This x is this. Okay. Next to mu, actually we use uh, m for uh, mean. We will not use uh, mu. We will use m or x bar I have used in all my classes for mean. Uh, it represents the mean of the data set. Next, uh, n. It will represent number of data values and mod. This is mod. What does it represent? It represents the absolute value. Absolute value means, say for example, if I have minus 1, if I want to find the absolute value for minus 1, I will write that minus 1 in between mod. My answer will be 1. Okay, means I neglected or I ignored the minus sign. Okay. Now, other thing which I was telling is, in the ungrouped data, you will not have frequency. In grouped data, you will multiply frequency with that formula. The same formula. You are multiplying frequency. Okay. For mean deviation about mean, you use a mod of xi minus mean by n. Okay. Here you have frequency. Okay. Same thing happens for median also. You don't have frequency in median. This is also finding mean deviation about mean. Sorry, about median. You are finding mean deviation about median. Like that only you can also have finding mean deviation about mode also. At that time in place of median what will be there? In place of median you will have mode. That's all. Okay. So these are the formulae. I think it's better you write n here. You don't write all this. Just write n in the denominator. Okay. Only n is there in the denominator. Only thing is you are multiplying fi there. Okay. So this is the finalized formula. Now, I will do one example, you will understand, don't worry. The question is, determine the mean deviation for the data values 5, 3, 7, 8, 4, 9. We have the formula. I don't have any number which is repeated here. Any re number is repeated? No. So, I will not take frequency. So, it become a ungrouped data. What I will do now? First, I will find the mean for the given data. What is this 5 plus 3 plus 7 plus 8 plus 4 plus 9? Divided by how many? 1. 2, 3, 4, 
five, six. Six terms are there. So uh, added all this you have to sum up. Divide by six. Five plus three plus seven plus eight plus four plus nine divide by six. You will get six. Okay, this is one thing. Next, this is one you say. Next, what you will do? You will subtract each mean from the data value. At that time, while subtracting, you will use the mod like this. You will use the mod means you will ignore the negative sign. So what you will do now? Five. See what are the numbers given? Five, three, seven, eight, four, nine. Five minus six. This is the mean which I found. Okay. First number minus six is one. Then second number minus six. Third number minus six. Fourth number minus six. I went on doing this. So I found one new data set. What is the new data set which I found now? This one, three, one, two, two, three. This is my second step. Now what I will do? I found the new data set. No, this data set how I found? I found by doing this, this thing, this thing I did. Now I have to do summation. I will do summation and I will do by n. n is a how many terms are there? Okay. So my this first thing was I found a mean. After finding first, after finding mean, I did number two. What is this two thing? X i minus mean with the mod. Okay, I'll write it here. First step, I found the mean. Second step, I did mod of x i minus mean. Third step, I did summation of x i minus mean by n. Okay, this x i minus mean is this. After second step, I got new data set here, right? New data set I will get new data. That new data I will use it here. Correct. So this was my first step. This was my second step. This was my third step. Okay, I hope I am clear. If you are not understanding, please watch. Uh, stop. Pause the video right now. You try to work out by yourself. Okay, this is very simple. It looks uh, complicated. So much only. If you understand, it is very easy. So in the third step, I added the new data set. I divided it by six because here n is six. Number of numbers are six. I get the answer two. So what is the mean deviation for the original number set which is given in the question? It is two. Okay. So now what you have to do if you have f i, you just have to include f i here. Okay. Means if you have the grouped data. Then your formula will become summation f i x i minus mean by n. Okay. So this formula is for the grouped data. This is how you find the mean deviation. Okay. This of course it will be one to n. Now let's see what is variance. Variance means a symbol for variance will be like this sigma square. This is one symbol, or you also write like this V A R of X. Actually, like we denote uh, X for observations. No, we denote X for observations. That is the symbol for observations. No, like that only for variance. Uh, like this, you write symbol is variance of X. Okay. Now, what is variance? It is a measure of how data points differ from the mean. How much different the data points are from the mean? That is only variance. Okay, uh, it means to find the expected difference or deviation from actual value. Therefore, variance will depend on standard deviation. Now, what is standard deviation? That I will tell you after variance. Okay, so don't worry about this point now only. Okay, don't worry about this point now. Let us focus on first two points. So we have to find variance means it will tell us. How data points differ from mean means uh, to find the expected difference of deviation from actual value. Okay. For example, I will give you one example how to find the variance. Uh, if you have numbers like this: one, two, three, four, five. First, what you do to find variance? First, you have to find mean. Now, why we have to find mean first? Uh, because the formula to find variance is 
this is equal to summation f i x bar minus x whole square by n. Okay, mean is there here. That's why we have to find mean first. This will be our first step. Mean will be equal to how many numbers are there? Five numbers. What are the numbers? One plus two plus three plus four plus five divided by five. This will give me how much? Ten fifteen by five. This will give three. So this will be my mean. Now second step. What will be the second step? You have to do mean minus x. Mean minus x. Mean is three minus x. This is x, right? Then mean minus x. Then mean minus x. Then mean minus x. Then mean minus x. But uh, there is a whole square. See in the formula, we have a whole square, right? Whole square. So what is the data set I am going to get now? I will get nine. Uh, three minus one will be two square. It will be four. This one will be one. This one will be zero. This one will become again one because whole square is there. Minus sign will go. And here again it will become four. Now this is the new data set I got. Now frequency is not there, right? So I will not need the frequency. This was for. Uh, problems with the frequency if i don't have frequency in the question then my formula will be summation x bar minus x whole square by n i will not take frequency into picture then correct now i got the new data set right so i can find variance easily now variance x is equal to in the numerator i have summation so summation means sum up i will sum up all this so it is 4 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 4. In the denominator, I have n. n means frequent, uh, this number of uh, uh, numbers. How many numbers are there? 5. So my variance will become again 8, 9, 10 by 5. This will be my variance. Okay. This is how you have to find variance. Okay. Now I will talk about what is a standard deviation. Standard deviation means nothing but square root of variance. Standard deviation symbol is this. That's why we told variance as this. Okay. This is standard deviation. Yes, D they write. Symbol is sigma. Sigma. This sigma square, it will give variance. So variance is equal to sigma square. Standard deviation square. Or if I want to find the standard deviation, Sigma is standard deviation, right? If I want to find standard deviation, what I will do now? It will be square root of variance. That's all. Correct? Now, variance is sigma square. What will be sigma? It will be square root of variance. Now, what is sigma? It is standard deviation. Okay? It is standard deviation. Now, all the symbols, you know, don't worry about uh, mu because I am using x bar. It is a x bar. x bar means mean. Okay. Now, one question was asked in HSTR 2015. This is a 2015 question. So, actually, I have solved a uh, question paper of HSTR 2015. I will give you the link in the description. You can go and watch that class. I have solved this problem there. How to find the standard deviation? What I do? First, I see number of observations. N. N is number of observations. Then, I will see the sum. What is the list of numbers given? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Frequency is not needed because no number is repeated. They have given standard deviation number. Means sigma they have given. What is sigma? It is 1.4. See, they have given 1.4. They are telling you to find the standard deviation of other numbers. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. First one group of numbers they are given. You can find that standard deviation. Then they are telling you to find the standard deviation of other numbers. Now what you can do with this? Only one trick is there. You find the variance. You find the variance for a first group. If you find the variance for first group, you can easily find the standard deviation for second group. 
because standard deviation is equal to square root of variance. So find the variance. Just now we saw how to find variance, right? Use that method only and find the variance. You get the variance. Easily you can find the standard deviation and this standard deviation will be same for other numbers also. Okay. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Why I am saying that it will be same? See the numbers, how the series is written. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next series. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Do you agree with me that the variance will be same for both? You must agree. See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is like a same trend, same style. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Correct? So, variance will be same for both the data sets, for both the scores. With that trick, I can use standard deviation. Standard deviation is equal to square root of variance and I can easily find the answer. Okay? Right now, pause the video, try to do by yourself. Only one trick you should learn here is, the data set is, you see the two data sets. Okay? You find the variance for first data set. For first data set. Okay? Then you find the standard deviation for second data set. Okay? You can do that, right? But how you find the standard deviation for second data set? Just you have to do the square root of variance. Okay? I hope that you understood. Okay? Now let's uh, see one more thing. Coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation means they also write it as CV. It is actually one relative standard deviation or a capital RSD. It is a standardized measure for a dispersion. Actually you use a probability distribution or frequency distribution. No, for that you can have some standardized measurement. This standardized measurement for dispersion, this will give you coefficient of variation formula. Now, you know how to find a standard deviation. You know how to find a variance. You can use a standard deviation to find the variance. You can also use a standard deviation to find a coefficient of variance also. Okay, coefficient of variance. What is the formula? Standard deviation by mean into 100. That's it. Only so much is the formula. This formula is for a coefficient of variation. Okay. Now I have this table for you for quick revision. Okay. Range L minus S. What all, all the terms mean? You should see in the class. You should go back and uh, See what are all the terms mean. This is one quick revision for you. That's all. Coefficient of range. Next, uh, mean deviation. This is actually like this. Uh, X bar. Like this it should be. X bar. Okay. Everywhere. X bar. Okay. So, mean deviation. Then, uh, coefficient of mean deviation. To find coefficient of mean deviation. Mean deviation upon median. Actually, this is not there in your syllabus. Uh. Only this is important and this is important. But we cannot take risk, no, because they asked coefficient of range in TET, no. That's why I am giving you all this. Then, standard deviation. What is n? Number of observations. Okay. Then, variance. Then, coefficient of variance. Now, what is the relationship between standard deviation and variance? Very important. Variance is equal to sigma square. Okay. Relation between standard deviation and variance. Or, vice versa. Sigma will be equal to square root of variance. What is sigma? Standard deviation. I am expecting this question this time. Very, very important point this is. I am expecting this only this time. Okay? Okay, friends. This completes your full chapter statistics. Actually, I should say sorry also because I got a little bit delayed with this class because I was very much occupied with the crash course that's why i could not uh, record this class earlier but somehow i managed to uh, finish this class before the exam 
before TET exam. Okay. So this finishes your uh, statistics. Okay. And then uh, one more thing is, uh, as I told earlier also, I want to say all the best to all Karnataka TET aspirants. And uh, also, uh, you can see the link of the other classes of Karnataka TET and HSTR in the description. I will give you the playlist link for HSTR and Karnataka TET, all the free classes which are available in this YouTube channel. Okay. And uh, even for the fee payment and tentative schedule also, that link also I will give in the description. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Bye.